degree of international approach and a universal organization approach to actually make sure the how question happens, that 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 any benefits that can that come from all this activity actually benefit all of us. One of the things that uh, we're quite interested in doing in our research too is actually is that what I call the when question is when do you apply these things? Because let's just contemplate this and I'm going to throw this actually as to questions to people who are here and go, is there a difference between the recent JAXA, the Japanese um, asteroid mission, which brought back a scientific sample, it brought back a number of tens of grams of an asteroid compared to what I'm proposing as a hypothetical um, third generation mission to the Psyche metal asteroid, Psyche 16, which is the one that's worth 75,000 times our global economy. If that, if that brought back a scientific sample that was of the order of a, mat, of a few kilograms, including a whole lot of rare earths, when should we apply that as a commercial compared to a scientific question? So when we're talking about this, why are we doing this? How are we all going to develop wealth for the whole of the, the, the world? The when question is quite important because it asks questions around when is an activity truly scientific or for that matter, charity? So um, the, the uh, SpaceX mission that's flying soon is a charity. There's a billionaire paying for the four seats on the, pli on the flight and three of those seats are being um, raffled for St. Jude's Medical Hospital. So that's a scientific stroke charity mission. A survival mission might be we have a robotic or a human mission on Mars or Earth, oh, sorry, Mars or the moon, and you need to harvest helium, hydrogen, uh, natural resources to actually make sure that that can survive. So again, that's not really a commercial um, exploration of it. And the third thing is actually an outright commercial activity where we are going to mine something to generate a, a profit for someone. We are going to um, fly a plane or a, or a spacecraft to generate a profit based on space travel. So there, I mean, the when question then becomes very important. Otherwise we end up with some strange interpretations where you could claim something's a scientific activity when in fact it's really a commercial activity. And again, a commercial activity shouldn't just be seen as a company, a state, say whether it's um, a state organization like the Chinese or the Japanese or even the NASA, um, things are all state organizations, but they can generate commercial outputs for those nations. At the same time, um, some of our- Evan, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, we do need to uh, go and move on to the next session. So if you could please provide a one minute summary for us, uh, that would be fantastic. I certainly can. So my summary is up in front of you and I'm happy to um, take questions while we're watching it, but it's actually saying that as we think about these things and how do we generate money, uh, how do we generate a return from a commons, we need to think about a why, the how, and also the when are we going to apply those things? And I'll leave it there, Nate. It's a, a good note to leave it on, Kevin, actually give us all something to ponder. Uh, thank you very much. And I, I would like to ask all of our attendees to please thank me. Joy, uh, sorry, thank, join me in thanking all of our uh, presenters. That was a slip of the tongue. Talk about. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll hand back now to our MCs who will uh, take us out to our closing ceremony. Uh, but thank you all once again. Over to you, Vienna and Christian. ...selection of researchers from all different fields, and it was just so insightful to see that space is not just about science, engineering and rockets, which are also fantastic, but it's about law and medicine and psychology. So thank you very much, presenters. Thank you to those who applied. Um, we're sorry we, um, we weren't able to select you for this time, but we will be running events throughout the year where you'll have the opportunity to present. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we now go to the closing keynote for the ISU Adelaide Conference. It is live on YouTube right now, so you can share the link with your friends. Um, it's available for everybody to see. Now, it's a special keynote by the president of ISU, Yuan Delmao, and he will be in conversation with one of our organizing committee, um, Emmeline Pat Dowstrom. So it's going to be an excellent conversation. I'm really looking forward to it, and I couldn't think of a better person to close our conference today. 
Thank you all for tuning in. Um, please join us on the Zoom, or if you're not in, um, in the Zoom, join us on YouTube. Yeah, kia ora, everyone. Um, greetings from New Zealand, uh, where I am actually uh, at, at the moment. And welcome to the closing uh, plenary session for the 2021 ISU Adelaide Conference. It's really, uh, it's, it's so weird that it's almost over. Uh, just today just was a whirlwind. Um, but for, uh, for one, I wanted to acknowledge that uh, we actually have, uh, we're being joined today by over 200 and, and more people that have signed up to the Discover ISU Day, which is coming up uh, in the breakout sessions. So the more about that uh, in a little bit, but welcome to those joining us for the first time uh, and more on the sessions uh, later. So um, essentially, I mean, I, I believe there's no better person to really close us out uh, today and to talk about ISU as an institution and uh, also an institution that has created a global the kind of like space community for the past 30 plus years um, all around the world. And, and of course, uh, that, the, that person would be our ISU president, the kind of uh, Juan de Dalmau. Um, Juan is an alumni of the ISU Space Studies program back in 1989, and in fact, my claim to fame is that we're classmates. Uh, so um, uh, he has subsequently uh, been involved with ISU as uh, you know, faculty, chair, summer program, um, uh, uh, program director, uh, and also academic council member before he became the president. Uh, and then he also has this illustrious long uh, career in the European Space Agency and Kines French um, uh, Agency as well. So uh, without further ado, um, I would like to uh, uh, definitely welcome Juan de Dalmau. Maganda umaga. <laughs> Maganda umaga. <laughs> I'm also Filipino. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, good morning in Tagalog. Thank you, Emmeline, for uh, the introduction and for the wonderful event that you are co-organizing. I chose to say good morning in uh, Tagalo uh, because I just noticed you, you have a good pronunciation in Spanish. Thank you for uh, calling me with the right name. And uh, my first words in Tagalo I learned with you in 1989. And I think that's one of the beautiful aspects of ISU is that you can learn a little bit from everybody and from everywhere. And that makes you a better world citizen. I am so delighted that we have had such a successful ISU Adelaide conference for two days, really professionally organized. And I wish we could stay much longer because uh, you could see just in this last uh, panel how much information, how much enthusiasm there is from space professionals around the world, especially around the Asia Pacific region to share uh, their knowledge and their passion with all of us. I would like to really uh, thank all the speakers all the uh, panel uh, facilitators, you have put a lot of time into this and it has paid off. Um, the ISU Adelaide Conference has uh, raised the bar even higher compared to last year's in-person uh, conference uh, in uh, Adelaide, uh, Australia. I would like to really thank all the partners who have uh, been uh, spearheading this initiative uh, from Australia, from New Zealand, from many other uh, parts of the Asia Pacific uh, region. In particular, the space industry, the South Australia Space Industry uh, Center that is led by an ISU alum there in Lovell. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, support. Also the Australian Space Agency and uh, uh, many players uh, in and around Adelaide like the uh, newly founded Andy Thomas a Foundation for uh, Space Education and uh, Outreach. Uh, all of these organizations uh, are relatively young, uh, especially the Australian Space Agency. And we're very uh, pleased to see that uh, ISU 
programs and ISU community members are really key persons in all these uh, initiatives. I can say I've learned a lot also from uh, speakers uh, who have uh, contributed from uh, Japan. Thank you very much uh, to JAXA and to the ISU board member, uh, Mr. Kamimori-san. Uh, also to UNISEC, which is a nonprofit uh, space education and outreach organization uh, in Japan, but also globally. I am uh, always uh, impressed by the speakers from India. Uh, really, uh, I think Israel and all the ecosystem, the space ecosystem in India is, is an example of how uh, space technology and applications uh, are really used for the benefit of citizens and for improving, improving the quality of life of people uh, here on Earth. Uh, congratulations to Israel. We look forward to welcoming as many as 14 of your uh, scholars this coming uh, July and August, when we will be uh, hosting the next space studies program uh, in Europe. It will be a multi-site uh, space studies program. We're trying to innovate a little bit. So half of the class will be, uh, maybe one third of the class will be in Granada, Spain, and uh, one third will be uh, where I'm speaking to you right now in Strasbourg, uh, France. And perhaps one third of the class will be online. So that will be the next step in the innovation, uh, multi-site, uh, and hybrid uh, educational programs. I want to uh, tell you what is happening right now in Beijing. Uh, there is a special event organized by a number of ISU partners um, and led by the International Peace Alliance for Space uh, that is being held right now in a prestigious hotel in Beijing. Uh, where a number of guests are uh, talking about a future educational center that uh, will probably be um, founded on the southern island of uh, Hainan. That's where one of the uh, Chinese uh, launch uh, sites uh, is a beautiful, beautiful island uh, in a place that has a good climate also in the winter. And uh, this group of uh, Chinese partners uh, is uh, going to connect with us uh, in uh, a few minutes uh, to be part of the um, Discover ISU event. I have also learned a lot about the Philippines. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm sure that you, Emmeline, have been uh, key in uh, making the arrangements for Mr. Marciano, the Director General of uh, Philsa, to be with us. Uh, it's impressive to see how things are developing uh, also in the Philippines and not to mention uh, New Zealand uh, where um, there is one of the uh, space agencies uh, that is really very, very active and we look forward to seeing more uh, ISU programs uh, being held in the region. Um, you know, Australia was the pioneering uh, country for ISU in this area and China and Thailand, where there was a, a space studies program already in 99. Uh, we hope to have a program in India in the next few years, uh, but probably already this year, we might see a program um, managed from uh, New Zealand. Uh, we hope it will be uh, before, uh, before uh, June, and uh, that uh, will be a, a one week executive space course uh, open to all the Asia Pacific region or anyone who wants to uh, join us uh, in the Asia Pacific uh, time zone. Uh, let me get back now uh, to conclude uh, to Australia again uh, to really uh, congratulate and, and thank uh, all the organizers uh, led by Scott Schneider and um, I will probably forget some names, but uh, I've been admiring the work of uh, Vienna Tran, of uh, Christian uh, Talervolsky, and uh, of uh, Melanie Ward, and uh, all the team that has been working hard to prepare for this uh, event with uh, support from uh, my colleagues uh, here in Strasbourg at the uh, ISU Central Campus. Uh, we look forward to uh, really going again to uh, Adelaide in person because as we all heard, uh, there is an upcoming inauguration of the uh, new uh, Space Discovery Center 
uh, in Adelaide, in the city center, that uh, is a promising um, development uh, for space outreach. And we hope that uh, we can then meet in person with uh, those who have been uh, speaking uh, to us from Adelaide, including the South Australian Premier uh, and also the new uh, head of the Australian uh, Space Agency, Enrico Palermo. Uh, as you all know, he's an ISU alum. So thanks to all of you uh, for uh, this wonderful event. And uh, I hope, uh, Emmeline, that uh, you still have energy to continue and to do more of these uh, wonderful uh, projects. Over to you. Thanks, Juan. That's a, a great recap of the, the past two days and, and also um, uh, thanking all of our basically sponsors and supporters. Um, uh, before we go to the, the breakout sessions, though, it's, I, I do have a few questions for, for you. I mean, uh, you know, ISU has been around for almost 35 years now, and there's 5,000 alumni all across the globe uh, in, uh, in very high places, which uh, was pretty apparent in, in, in the conference uh, the, the, this past two days. And, and sometimes we're kind of like, uh, also called, you know, the space global mafia. Um, and so I guess the, uh, my question is like, well, what do you think has been ISU's unique role uh, in the global space community or industry to date, which is, uh, has created this sort of like global impact? Yes, I think that uh, if we would ask this question to the founders of ISU, uh, these uh, three uh, young uh, persons who were under 30 uh, at the time when they uh, organized the founding conference uh, back in 1987, I think uh, these three young people would be and are very proud of uh, what their vision has become because they see, as you say, uh, about 5,000 uh, professionals who are for the vast majority in the space sector who have attended one or the other ISU program. And uh, if we uh, go to China, for example, we will find close to 600 of these alumni who are for many of them in uh, top positions uh, today. So if you want to do space business in China, just use the ISU network. You will find everyone in every space related organization including uh, startup entrepreneurs uh, since a few years. And what is really beautiful to see is that some of these startups were born through discussions during ISU programs, during team projects or uh, workshops or just informal conversations. And um, if you look at uh, some of these startups, uh, one of them was founded by a Chinese uh, alumna and a Swedish uh, alum and they're based in Germany. Uh, you see, uh, I was uh, updating the list of uh, startups that have been founded or co-founded by ISU alumni, more than 100. And we will soon publish it. More than 100 startups around the world um, founded by alumni and in many of those companies you will see there is more than one co-founder because these are people who met during the programs and who learned how to uh, pitch an idea, how to prepare a truly multidisciplinary proposal and how to convince uh, investors or uh, strategic partners or customers or how to uh, recruit. Uh, if you would come to Strasbourg, uh, you would uh, be taken to a tour of uh, the building and uh, you would probably end up on the third floor where the incubator is and you would meet with the entrepreneurs and uh, they would tell you, yes, we are here because this is a hub and we can talk to the ISU students every day and we can uh, see uh, if we can invite one of them to do an internship with us. And then uh, you can imagine what happens afterwards. Uh, one of these companies uh, came less than one year ago with three people. Now they are already 15 and they have hired uh, two, two uh, graduates of the masters uh, and this all in the middle of the pandemic. So imagine what will happen when, when there's no pandemic. 
I hope I'm answering a little bit uh, yeah, to your yeah, question. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I guess related to that on a personal level, I mean, we, we're both alumni. And even for me, I mean, quite honestly, I think my career would not have happened over these past few decades without ISU. Every single uh, part of it uh, always has some connection to, to somebody. So, I mean, I guess uh, the other th question here is like, uh, how did ISU influ influence your own career path as an alumni? Yes, uh, that's a, a short answer, Emmeline. I've been trying to get out of the space sector <laughs> and I've tried to get out of uh, ISU uh, for more than 30 years and um, I haven't managed yet. Um, so that's what can happen to you. You put one finger into the space community and then uh, you never get out again. But I, <laughs> I think that's what, what people want to do. So stay, uh, stay with us. Thanks very much. Yeah, same here. So you also touched about like the, the pandemic and, and of course, uh, 2020 was really a hard year for most people. Um, however, ironically, it actually made the world, uh, I think, um, more closer um, and it accelerated sort of exponentially uh, communications remotely. How, how has that sort of like affected ISU and, and uh, what did you do sort of to cope with the, all of the programs that are, that are happening today with, with the pandemic? Thank you for this uh, difficult one, uh, Emmeline. Mm -hmm. I think uh, following the vision of the founders, uh, we have been trying to even anticipate and this sounds a bit uh, difficult to believe, but um, the way we have anticipated is by organizing a team that would study what do we need to do to be prepared for the next pandemic mm. whenever it happens. Uh, so we had close to 90 space uh, professionals, young and senior, working from a simulated uh, distributed environment across the solar system. And they spent five weeks in teams uh, looking at the next pandemic and how space can help uh, prevent and mitigate uh, the next pandemic. Uh, you can find a report uh, on the ISU library uh, website this was the team project conducted uh, during the interactive space program. So the first online, fully online program uh, of this past year. And it's a, it's a good, good read. Uh, so I think we are adapting and we're taking the full advantage of the uh, new communication tools. Uh, look uh, how easy it is today uh, to be connected with people from all over Asia Pacific and uh, even beyond uh, without having to uh, pay for a single uh, flight ticket. Uh, let's enjoy this, uh, but let's not get uh, over zoomed. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So my, my last question, I guess, is, uh, you know, this conference was created, you know, specifically to get the region, uh, the Asia Pacific region uh, space community more connected. So uh, really interested to see what is ISU's goals or aspirations for uh, the Asia Pacific region and what is your short and long-term goals um, uh, for ISU? Yes, uh, we are very uh, interested in using the model of the uh, now uh, well-established collaborations in Australia to uh, continue with uh, other partnerships uh, very much uh, as the founders had imagined it with a network of uh, collaborations with universities and other organizations uh, across the world. So the collaboration in Australia uh, started uh, already in 2004 with the Space Studies program and uh, has then evolved into a, a permanent uh, yearly Southern Hemisphere Space Studies program that is held in January and February. And we see this as a, as a good model that has already been followed in the United States, for example, with uh, Florida Institute of Technology, uh, with whom we are offering a yearly program now on commercial space programs. Uh, we see 
possibilities for uh, permanent uh, partnerships also in China uh, for uh, an establishment uh, that would allow uh, space interested people to take courses in China. And um, we see the, the growth of the space sector really calls for more education, more professional development programs. And obviously uh, we, we are discussing with uh, potential partners how to uh, give a better service to all these uh, space interested uh, researchers, uh, entrepreneurs and uh, young people who will take us into a peaceful exploration and development uh, of space. And the Asia Pacific region is, is a major player Thanks so much, Juan. Uh, you know, that gives us uh, really exciting uh, things to look forward to for ISU activities in the region. Um, so to our audience, uh, we're not quite done yet. Uh, now that uh, hopefully your appetites are, are whetted for knowing more about the ISU programs in depth, uh, in the next kind of like sessions, breakout sessions, we're gonna have the Discover Day, which is a parallel session to the alumni sessions. Um, and uh, you'll be able to basically uh, get to understand more about the programs, uh, learn from other alumni who have done the programs uh, and, and also ask some questions. So I'm, I'm now going to uh, give you back to our host, uh, Vienna and Christian. Uh, to tell you more about the parallel sessions. And I will see you in the Discover ISU uh, in, in a little bit. So thanks again for joining us and, uh, and see you shortly. Thank you, Juan. What a great closing keynote that was. We're so lucky to have you join us. And thank you, Emmeline, for being, being a wonderful interviewer and, um, and tying, a, tying the entire conference together. That was an excellent summary. I couldn't have done better. Um, we, we, I really enjoyed listening to listening about all the different activities that are happening in the Asia Pacific region. It's just a burgeoning hot pot of so many different things that are happening and you know space is not for the few and for the rich anymore is it it's going to be for everyone um, from developing to developed countries this is what ties us together as participants in the conference it's the reason that we've all met and gathered today and especially in the asia pacific we are just so excited to see what's happening in china and in the philippines and in india and australia so it's Lots is, lots is happening and it's simply just a great time to be in the space family, whether that's within ISU or outside of it. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Christian to say a number of thank yous. Thank you, Vienna. Um, first of all, for you, for letting me uh, be your co-host. <laughs> and um, I want to thank especially um, the huge number of contributors to this conference. Um, We've attempted to uh, put everyone on, on the slide, and apologies if we've missed anyone. Um, we will uh, for sure uh, uh, rectify that. Um, it's been 65 um, contributors, um, some very distinguished speakers, others up and coming, um, very uh, young graduates or still uh, uh, PhD or master's degree students. Um, we've been very fortunate to have the Premier of South Australia speak, the head of the Australian Space Agency other distinguished uh, senior representatives from space agencies, um, very famous scientists in the space world, um, and, and we really want to acknowledge their contribution and everyone who's worked very hard on this. Um, there's a few I want to I wanna, um, mention very specifically, especially from our team. Nathan Taylor has done an amazing job. Scott Schneider, who kept everything together. Emmeline, who's been reaching out across Asia Pacific for all of us. Uh, Melanie, who's done an amazing social media job. And the one person you haven't seen is Mike, who's been sitting behind here um, in the uh, studio that we're broadcasting from, who's uh, done this amazing job in, um, in the production of all of this um, and these fading slides and everything and the music that you've heard. Um, yeah, so um, really what the only thing that, that's there is left to say is um, ISU Adelaide is very proud to be an integral part of the space community in this region, in Adelaide, in Australia, but also in this entire region um, that we've tried to cover with this conference, from India to New Zealand, Japan to Australia. 
and all the countries in between that. Um, there is, um, we, we want to do this on a regular basis, this conference. This is the second edition. Uh, so there uh, hopefully is going to be a third and a fourth and many more. We also want to stay in touch with you in between. We might you know, come back to you and, and offer you to take part in webinars or in podcasts. Um, there's a number of topics that we try to cover and that got cut short. Unfortunately, we might come back to you as speakers on a specific webinar on orbital debris, space law, careers, outreach and education, women in STEM. Um, all these exciting topics that we've just very briefly been able to touch um, in this conference. Um, so um, we also um, want to acknowledge our sponsors again, uh, Space Tech Partners, who's been very helpful. They were the first ones to give us some money to start uh, uh, producing this conference. Space Watch Global, who's been a media partner. Stone and Chalk, who's given us this venue um, to, to broadcast from. Um, and who else? I'm sorry, blackout. Well, we've got our, our supporters here, our friends <laughs> yeah. that we've listed on the website. ISU, the New Zealand Space Agency, the Australian Space Agency, Philippines, oh, Japan, sorry. and all The of South those. Australian Space Industry Centre, I'm sorry. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we'll be back next year. So now, as Emmeline said, there's two sessions that are starting basically right after this. One is the alumni session. If you're an ISU uh, alumni, we... Uh, uh, beg you to join that. It's the typical or the, the uh, strong family uh, experience that we have and that we know from ISU. And if you are not uh, a participant or have not participated in the past in an ISU program and you wish to learn more, please join us in the Discovery Day. Um, uh, that uh, link has been published in the uh, chat here, but also uh, I believe in the Eventbrite invites if you've signed up before. It's public, it's free, you can join right now and meet uh, ISU educators, staff, and, uh, and, and also, I believe, even Juan, the uh, president of the International Space University, and learn more uh, about ISU programs. Uh, we're now um, going to close this conference officially. We're going to start the next sessions, uh, the uh, uh, alumni session, and the Discover Day is already started. And thank you very much. Go forth into the sessions that you wish to. We'll keep the credits rolling in case you have any questions for us. Otherwise, see you, see you next, next year. year. Ad Astra. <laughs>